Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionsell.com. How's everyone doing? Today is Saturday, November 27th, 2021, getting on towards the end of the year. Welcome back to another edition of our Saturday synopsis. What do we do here? We look at the charts, we look at stock charts, we look at the indexes, we look at individual stocks. I'm here to help you try to become a better trader. And by doing so, we do that by looking at the charts. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing for 30 years. So I'm here to help you make these free videos to give you an idea of what I'm looking for, what I'm seeing on the charts, and what I use to help me gauge when it's time to get in and out of a position. So sit back, relax, and, and let me take you through the steps and, and take you through the technical indicators and what I use to see on the charts to help me gauge you know, when a trade may be ready to go. Um, it's a big day today, college football, big, big game, Ohio State at Michigan for all you uh, college football fans. Now, I won't tell you which team I'm rooting for, hint, hint, but I'm looking for a good game today. So let's just jump right in. We look at the indexes first, and then we'll look at some individual stocks, and I'll show you what patterns I'm seeing what these stocks may be telling me, when it may be time to get in or out of a trade. So let's just jump right in here. Open up the chart. So we always look at the S&P 500 first because I feel that's the, the broadest measure of the overall market. And, and it tends to give you an idea of which way the market is headed. Now we use the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500 index. And um, it's very easy easy to trade, trades just like a stock. You can get in and out at will all day long. So I like to use that as my gauge for, for seeing how the overall market is doing. <clears throat> um, I like to give an idea of what I'm using here just for the newcomers. You know, we get new people joining this group, this, this YouTube channel every week. So I like to give a quick little overview of, of the charts that I use. Some people say I, I should, you know, not give this intro week after week. I understand that you're tired of hearing me say it, but for the newcomers, I'll go over pretty quickly. I usually default to daily charts, which is one day's worth of trading on each one of these bars. Each one of these vertical bars is one day's worth of trading. So I default to the daily bar charts. You can use intraday charts, which is one minute charts, five minute charts for you hyperactive traders. You can also use candlestick charts, which I don't use. I use the bar charts, which is the open, high, low, close type of bar charts. And on these charts, I always I, I keep it pretty simple. I have three moving averages. I have a 20 day simple, a 50 day simple and a 200 day simple moving average. At the bottom here, I have the 14 day RSI indicator with the 20 with the 80 level and the 20 level as my parameters that shows me whether a stock or index is overbought or oversold. It's not a measure of a, a turnaround right then and there. If it gets into overbought or oversold area, it's just an indicator telling me that, hey, keep an eye out. Things are getting a little overheated or a little oversold. So that's really all that I use. The rest of it is based on patterns that when, when you're looking at these charts with me, if this is your first time, you'll see these weird looking triangles and W patterns and these, these channels. These are all technical indicators that I use. These are widely known, widely followed. You can do more research about these. You just do a Google search on chart patterns for stocks and, and you'll come up with lots of websites and pages that you can read and or other YouTube videos. So let's just jump in and take a look at where the market is heading, where we've been. Uh, on my chart here, I got about two years worth of, of information. That's not what you need. It, it, you know, unless you want each chart platform is different. So I just my real estate here is about two years worth of time. Um, as we are bullish at the smart option seller, we look for bullish types of trades. What do we do? We sell put options and put option spreads. So we're looking for bullish types of activity. Now, as you can see, the, 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 the general market here is the, the, the meltdown of the pandemic in February, March, 2020. And since then we've just gone straight up, right? The market from bottom left to upper right. That's what you want to see full of, for a bullish stock or index the market's just going up like this and in between moving up you'll have pullbacks along the way we like to draw these channels that will help us decide when it could when the time is right to get in or out of position so if you have this channel that you've drawn you can see that the sp 500 has been bouncing along this channel and when it bounces along the lower edge here 
uh, when it hits the lower edge, I should say, it will tend to bounce. Um, and even though it's coming lower, in the long run, it's still moving in an upward trajectory. That's what you want to see. Now, we've talked about this in the past. September 1st came around. Um, there are seasonal patterns for the market. August, September, part of October is typically a more bearish time for the market. So right around here, September 1st, the market went into this little bit of a six-week pullback and has since rallied back up. We've hit all-time highs, all-time new highs actually this week. This bar right here was an all-time new high for the S&P 500. And then the last couple days of this week, th this was a short week. We had the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S., um, but yesterday, which was Friday, short day Friday, the, the, the hours were a little shortened because of that holiday. This one bar right here, this was Friday, November 26. Um, so the big news that's coming out in the world now is this new um, strain of the, the, the coronavirus that was discovered in South Africa, um, s supposed to be much more contagious than the Delta variant that came out over the summer. So we've got we've got some some more global news that sent the market into this little big move down yesterday, Friday, November 26th. So that's another thing that that another news item that we'll have to worry about um, as far as the market goes. You know, any big global news event like that, especially COVID now, it's going to send the market into what I think is a temporary down move you know it's something new people don't know what it is yet or or how contagious it really is we have the we need the science to to do a quick little you know synopsis on it that could take you know a couple of weeks who knows how fast they're moving but i think you know knowing that we already have the vaccines and how fast these vaccines were created i don't think this is going to be the start of a major massive down move i just don't see that happening sure we'll get a pullback we may get another pullback on monday until we get some more information out there and 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 some confirmation from governments around the world that okay yes we've we've seen this new thing we've got it under control shouldn't be a problem we don't know if that will be the narrative yet but until that you know some people will get a little nervous and and, and start selling but to me, that's probably more of a buying opportunity. Uh, we like to see where the bottom, if a bottom occurs, um, where that may happen. You know, as of right now, we have this 50-day moving average. That could be the next landing point for the S&P 500 next week, maybe, or maybe on Monday we'll just rally back up. It's hard to say at this point because these are these types of global news events are, are very hard to, to gauge sometimes. They come out of nowhere. So every you may be thinking that you're doing everything right in in the market and in, in, in your trading, and this big thing comes along and, and knocks everyone for a loop. That's just the hazards of investing. But as you can see, over the long run, and let's take a look back. We'll look at the monthly chart here. If my thing will um, work with me, um, this is the stock market over time, and you can see since. You know, here's 1999. We had the 2000 meltdown, and then we went up. We had the 2008 meltdown, and this look where we've gone since. Now we know that the central banks around the world have lowered interest rates to zero, so that has helped quite a bit. But we've had pandemics, we've had wars, we've had other global unrest. But the the stock market will continue to go up over time. And why is that? Because the stock market is made up of companies that create products that people buy, and these companies are profitable, and that's how the stock market moves. It's made up of, of profitable companies whose share price have to follow their earnings. If the earnings are going up, the share prices will go up. That's what the stock market is made of. So we go back to the daily chart here. So, uh, you know, we have, we're going to have pullbacks along the way. That's, that's a guarantee. But these pullbacks can be used as buying opportunities if that's what you're looking for. That's what we look for. We look for buying opportunities in our newsletters when we sell puts. So right now, we're sort of in a watch mode here. We want to see where this thing lands over the next week or so. We're going to tread a little lightly here because we don't know what's going on with this thing. So it's better to keep your money on the sidelines sometimes or take smaller positions because you really don't want to get caught with a long position and have this thing move down and then you get stopped out and you get frustrated. So 
tread a little lightly here when you have big big news items like this. We'll see where it goes. But I think eventually, and it shouldn't be that long, the market will continue to move to all-time new highs. Now, let's take a quick look at the VIX here because the VIX is the volatility indicator that tracks the market. And the VIX moves inversely to the general stock market. The VIX is just... Um, it's a fear gauge. It's the volatility of the S&P 500 near month options. And when we have big sell offs like that, the VIX, which is this, will tend to to spike. And you can see, let's go back a little bit in time to um, the pandemic, February, March 2020, where volatility just spiked when we had that nasty down move in the market. And then as the market started to go back up, volatility started to come down. Now, volatility is also a gauge of option prices. And when volatility spikes like this, option prices get more expensive, both put options and call options. And when volatility comes down, the option prices come down with it. So you can see when we have these large down moves in the market, you'll have these spikes, these quick spikes in volatility. And they don't usually last that long. So yesterday, Friday, November 26, we had this spike right here, volatility spike. So I have to believe it's going to end up being just like these other you know, one, two, three day events where the market will come down quickly and the VIX will spike just like you're seeing here. And then in a couple of days, the volatility will start to come off, which means the market is heading back up. OK, so you can see these spikes don't last very long. And along with the market itself, the market doesn't stay down for very long. So here's the S&P 500 again. So I'm thinking maybe another day or two down move in the market potentially to this two this this is the 50 day moving average right here it already came down below the 20 day we got the 200 day down here this is the 200 day moving average so we may have another day or two of down moves which may keep the vix up and then i think we'll get the pop we get some good news from the scientists that okay we've got this under control um, and so that you know that's what i'm looking for so we're treading a little lightly here but anyway let's just take a look at what else is happening Let's go to the QQQ, which is the, the tracking stock, the ETF for the NASDAQ. Same thing you can see been move, has, has been moving up, but you have the pullbacks along the way, okay? And we draw these channels. These are things that help us understand which way a market may move next. And just like the S&P 500, we had a little down move this week. Had all-time new highs here. It's making keeps making all-time new highs, which is a good thing for those of us that are long or bullish in the market. Um, and just like the S&P 500, you can draw, you can draw the trend lines. You can, you can have the, you can have a nice long channel like this. Okay. You don't have to go back a year in time. You can go back three months, six months, whatever you want. This is all part of technical analysis. It's all about drawing trend lines, looking for support and resistance areas, looking at patterns, okay? So the market looks good. Okay, so we may have hit a top here. It hit the top leg of the channel. So we may have a little pullback, may pull back to the 50-day moving average here. If things look bad with this new COVID thing, it may pull back to the bottom of the uptrending channel. Um, that's just how the market works. But in, as long as we're still in this upward trajectory, these pullbacks shouldn't really be seen as something that'll really scare you out. Okay. I think people get nervous when they see a pullback that this is it. This is here comes the next bear market. And then, and then eventually it bounces and starts making new highs. I mean, every time this thing hit a top, people say, okay, it's all over. And then it goes to the bottom and rallies back up. But you can see it's gone up overall. So if you're in the market for the long run or if you're looking for ways to invest for the long run, you can't be afraid of the pullbacks because pullbacks are part of the normal process of the market. And every time you think, well, I'm just going to wait for, for the market to, to make a new bottom or, or have a really big pullback and then I'll get in. And by that time, you're still waiting, waiting, waiting. The market keeps going up and it's going up without you. So you always, you have to have a, have to have a, you know, some skin in the game. You have to have some sort of exposure if that's what you're looking for. You know, that's what we do. We look for these opportunities. We look for the pullbacks. All right. So that's that. Let's look at the Dow Jones 
Um, this is the DIA, the diamonds, as they call. This is the exchange traded fund for the for the Dow Jones. Um, been moving up nicely as well. Had the pullback just like the the other indexes. Let's pull this down a little. So we had pullback. Now the Dow seemed to have gotten hit a little bit harder than the S and P 500 and 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 the Nasdaq. It's getting. It has dropped below both the 20 day and the 50 day moving average. Here's the 200 day lurking down below. So the Dow um, is only made up of 30 stocks. I don't put as much emphasis on that because of 30 stocks, but but it has gotten hit pretty hard the last two weeks or so. All right. Um, but my feeling is that you know I'm going to wait, see what the news, how the news flows comes out from this new COVID variant thing, uh, Omicron, it's called, I think. And we'll see. It's it's okay to sit on the sidelines. It's okay to, you know, be patient, and especially big news items like this. So you want to be a little more patient, but look for those prime opportunities for a potential next buy-in. All right. So let's start to look at some individual stocks. That we that's what we do. Let's look at Apple um, because we like to look at some of the more popular stocks and see what's been happening. Now, we, we talk about Apple usually every week here. And as I've been saying, yes, Apple's been trending higher, but in a really ugly fashion. And by that, I mean, it's just been going up, up, down, up, down. It, it, it can it can whipsaw you out, which is the worst thing you want to happen when you're when you're in a position. But it has kept moving up made all-time new highs just a couple days ago right here all-time new high but has come down the last couple days along with the rest of the market if if this variant doesn't seem to cause too much trouble um, Apple will find a bottom here and continue on its way higher maybe it'll catch a bottom along the 20-day moving average the blue line here or maybe the 50 day. It all depends on the overall market and the news flow about this new Delta Omicron COVID thing. And it's something we don't want to hear. We want to get rid of this thing for good. But un until we do, you're, we're going to get these mutations and this news flow, and it's going to knock the market back a little bit. But in the long run, we know that we know science is on the case. Uh, Back, the vaccines are there, so the market should continue to go higher. And that's because people are still buying products of these companies that make up the stock market. So eventually, the market will continue to go higher. Let's take a look at Tesla. We look at these more popular stocks because that's what a lot of people are interested in. Tesla had made all-time new highs near $1,250, $1,250 a share. So I had mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago, it had gotten extremely overbought, extremely overbought. We knew a pullback was coming at some point, just couldn't pinpoint when that would occur. Nobody can tell you when, when that turning point is going to be because there's so many people that want to get involved. When, when it hits that extreme point, that's when the, the, the pullback occurs, but it's hard to pinpoint the exact day. Now, if you thought this was the top right here and you started buying puts or or selling the stock shorting, which is very risky, you could have gotten hurt because it kept going up against you, like another $150 a share. But here was the turning point. It fell very quickly, found some support, rallied back up again, and now it's come down to, it seems to want to hold somewhere near the 20-day moving average here. A little bit below it, but it, it seems to want to catch that support right near the 20 day moving average. So if you're if you're playing with Tesla, we don't play with Tesla because it's just too too expensive, too risky, too volatile. It's fun to watch. Uh, where are we now in terms of overbought, oversold? It's right in the middle. So it's not, it, th this was all cleared out. This overbought got cleared out on this nice pullback here. And now it's just kind of trading right in the middle. So it's not overbought, not oversold. So what I'm thinking is, is that once this news flow gets positive again, uh, Tesla is going to take off again. It's just storing up some energy, trying to you know get its support here around the 20-day moving average. And then if the all clear is on this new Omicron thing, Tesla is going to go. It's going to go up again because there's too much interest in the stock, too much interest in the company to keep it down. It's not overbought anymore. So I have a feeling that once this news flow is positive, it's going back up. So that's Tesla. We looked at Apple. We looked at Tesla. Um, 
let's look at Netflix. Netflix, we have a position in Netflix. We've sold a put option spread on Netflix in our newsletter, which is a bullish trade. So Netflix had been trading in this nice channel here. We had gotten in right around here, which was the bottom of this prior move, went up, which we had hoped, but it has pulled back again along with the, the rest of the market. But it did rally. It actually rallied. So there were some stocks that were up yesterday. It was, it was kind of a weird day. Some stocks were down big and some stocks were up. Netflix was up over $7 yesterday. So it has moved itself back inside the channel. Here's yesterday's trading, this bar right here. So it, it, it closed inside the channel, which is a good thing. So I'm hoping that, you know, next week it will continue on its trajectory higher. That's what we like to see. We look when we when we put on new trades in the smart ops and seller, which are bullish trades, we look for the pullbacks to a support area, whether that's to the 20 day, 50 day average or to the bottom of a channel. That's where we look to decide, OK, this is a higher probability entry into the trade. You always want to look for higher probability entries. What are those? Those are exactly what I'm saying. A uh, stock that's in a bullish movement, bullish momentum that pulls back to a support area. That is a higher probability entry point, okay? Prior to that, Netflix had been in this long sideways channel here. It, it had been bouncing it from the top to the bottom practically. So you could have timed some of your entries along the bottom. Now, I, like, I would rather see it in an uptrend because that means the momentum's going higher. So I will wait for the pullback to a support area. So those are what we consider higher probability trades. Let's take a look at Disney. We've been talking about Disney of late. Now Disney had been in this sideways channel waiting for their earnings to come out. We don't typically trade, have a position on before an earnings announcements. We try to trade in between those earnings announcements, which is a roughly three month period. That's our that's our goal with Smart Ops and Seller. We trade in between those earnings announcements so we don't get hit by a surprise earnings like this. So here is Disney. Earnings came out on this day, got the big air pocket lower, and it just went from about close to $180 a share, now under $150. That is a big move for a solid stalwart like Disney. Now, I'm getting a little excited here about Disney because it is what I think getting to a bottom. Now we talked about Disney. I didn't have a video last week. So two weeks ago, we talked about Disney dropping through here and the RSI wasn't totally oversold yet. So I had said in that last video that we may see some more downside with Disney, possibly to $150 level. Now what I like here is that Disney has gotten down to the lower edge here of the oversold spot that I like to start really keying in on a stock. So Disney, you know, this nice kind of vertical, big move down um, and hitting the oversold area. So I would really start to take a look at Disney seriously for support starting to come in. And, you know, after a stock makes a big move like this, it has to it has to consolidate near the lows. It has to figure out what it wants to do. So a lot of the selling has been done. It will probably start to, you know, consolidate around here. And then people will come to grips with, you know, that this is probably a good area to buy Disney and it should start to move higher. I like how it's getting oversold here. So I'm really going to keep my eye on Disney. Let's see if there was um, any kind of volume spike uh, when this happened. So you can see here, here's the big volume spike. That typically happens on a big down move, right? You had the big down move here, air pocket. That was the big spike up and then and then the volume started to trend down back to more normal levels that means that most of the selling has been done and now it's fair game for more normal trading where the bottom feeders should start to come in and bring this thing back higher so let's remove this so we can see the chart better so i'm really um excited about an opportunity here opportunities for disney now Trying to pick a bottom could be a hard thing. Like you can get in here, maybe say, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to buy some shares because I think Disney has hit a bottom. It's possible we've hit the bottom here. It may have a little more to go. We don't know. And so if you're really itching to get into Disney, what I say is you can nibble, you nibble a little bit. By that, I mean, buy a couple shares, a handful of shares, you know, don't blow your whole account and, and back up the truck and buy everything. Buy a little here, or maybe you sell 
a put option or put spread using strike prices down here. Just don't go all in yet, but but I but I am getting excited about the bottoming here potential for Disney. So keep an eye on Disney for the eventual rally back higher because you know Disney's going to rally. You can't hold Disney down. You think Disney's going to go out of business? There's just no way. So getting in here is a good possibility. Maybe nibble a little bit. I'm keeping an eye on it, but I think eventually Disney's going to start to head back higher. All right, let's see what else we have here. Let's move this back up here. What other stocks? Um, Let's take a look at Amazon. We look at Amazon. Amazon is, is just really trying to get out of this sideways channel. It did pop above again this past week, just like it did over here, but it just came back into the channel. Um, it finished on the lows here yesterday, Friday, November 26th here. How do I know it finished? Because on the right side of each bar, there's a little dash mark. Can't really see it too well right here. And that's where it closed on the lows. So uh, Amazon was down $75 a share. So they closed right on the 20 day moving average right here. Here's the 20 day moving average. Here's where it closed. So maybe it'll find some support there depending on what the overall market does uh, this next week. But I think, I think Netflix, I mean, Amazon really wants to get out of this channel and start to move higher. So we'll see what, so we'll see what happens with Amazon in the near future. Um, what other stocks? Let me go through my list here real quick and see what we have. We have uh, Intel. Intel is still kind of in a down move. You know, we've talked about Intel versus AMD. I like AMD better. Intel to me is in a downtrend. Doesn't look like it's ready to pop back up. Kind of has this down move to it. Let's look at AMD because it's the one. It's this the chip sector. Oh, and I want to show you Nvidia as well. Didn't mean to do that. This is AMD. I like AMD much better than than Intel. And AMD has just been shooting higher. Um, had a little pullback earlier in the week, but 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 managed to get this little up move as well. So AMD is still strong. It had gotten overbought here. I still think it's a little on the high side, but AMD has just got this momentum. Um, I was waiting for a pullback to it, maybe at least a 20-day moving average. I don't think it's going to pull back to the 50. It's just too strong of a stock. So it may consolidate here. And then if the news is good next week, it probably will keep going. But let's take a quick look at NVIDIA because we had drawn a bull flag on it the last two weeks. And I'll show you what happened. So two weeks ago, or whenever it was, so we had drawn this bull flag, which is a bullish pattern. You got the flagpole and the pennant, the downtrending pennant, which typically once the stock makes the next move out of the pennant, it should go higher because it came from down here. It was on a bullish run, had the bullish pattern. The bull flag is more of a, a consolidation pattern ready to gear up for the next move higher. And what happened? It had earnings and it had popped right here. All time new highs had the nice move higher outside of the bull flag pattern came off a little bit towards the end of the week but the flag the bull flag did work once again and the next move out was higher it rallied a good you know fifty dollars a share from here to here so you want to watch these patterns you want to see how these patterns open up now here you can see maybe a little bit of a w pattern okay kind of looks like a w there's a lot of stocks that you'll find that have these these w patterns these congestion patterns, the flag patterns. Do your search. Do your Google search on chart patterns. Okay, you'll you'll see how these things play out. Usually, okay, it's not a guarantee, but these are higher probability patterns. Nike, I like Nike for the long run. Um, it's coming off a little bit. They have earnings in a few weeks, so I'm not sure I want to get into a trade on Nike yet. Oracle, love Oracle. Now let's take a look at Oracle. We had a position. We had sold a put option on Oracle, got out of it last week because um, it had gotten to our profit taking point. Now, Oracle coming down to the bottom leg of the uptrending channel could be a potential for a buy in for any bullish thinkers out there. Want to see if it keeps coming down a little bit more. It's hugging along the bottom part of the channel. It's not a guarantee. 
And it's always in the eye of the beholder. Some people may draw or see something different than I'm seeing. But what I'm seeing right now is we're coming down to the bottom edge of this uptrending channel. Could be a bullish entry point. Don't know yet. We're not really oversold or overbought. So right around 40, 41. So this is pretty good. So I'm keeping an eye on Oracle. Cisco had a big gap down from earnings, but it rallied back pretty good. I'm not really seeing anything on Cisco at the moment. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Procter & Gamble, nothing really there. Walmart, Walmart's just kind of sideways, bouncing around. I looked at Disney. Now we have the, we have the pharmaceuticals, which uh, I like. I like healthcare for the long run. Uh, this is Bristol Myers coming down, had a big move down, got oversold here. Um, but kept moving lower. This was some divergence where the price action keeps coming down, but the RSI is starting to move up. Uh, but still, Bristol Mars having some trouble. Made a new low here yesterday. Got below the prior low. So B BMI BMY might have a little more selling involved. Um, so we keep an eye on the pharmaceuticals. Merck, same thing. We had a position in Merck. We have a position in Merck. I like to see that thing start to move higher. Kellogg, Verizon. Now we let's talk about Verizon because I bring this up usually week after week. I like Verizon, but I'm not willing to get into the stock yet. Why? Because it's still showing me downwards momentum. Why buy a stock when it's in a downtrend? Still moving lower. Now it 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 was in this channel, but it, it fell out of the channel. So maybe it's making a new channel, right? We got this kind of new, got this new kind of leg to the channel right there um i don't know verizon's still in a downtrend it's not oversold yet so i'm still on hold until verizon shows me some upwards momentum what other stocks can i show you at&t same thing trading on the lows staying away from those paypal and square which i do like the payment providers but it's still in a downward trajectory Square, same thing. Downward, downward. I'm waiting for some 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 confirmation that they're ready to move higher. Costco still moving strong. God, I wish I had stayed in Costco. Keeps making new highs. Uh, McDonald's. McDonald's could be something to keep an eye on because it's just kind of hugging along the upsloping moving averages. Keeps bouncing. So keep an eye on McDonald's. It could bounce here off the 50-day moving average. It has a nice sort of slow, kind of a curved upwards mo momentum to it. I like McDonald's. Next bounce should probably take it up to all-time new highs. Again, Pepsi. Pepsi, same thing. Let's take a look here. Yep. I mean, it's got a nice upwards momentum to it. Probably will start to keep, keep going up, I should say, once it finds a bottom here. What else do we have? Oopsie. Close that out. Move this over. My mouse is a little bit wonky this morning. Um, what else do we have? Twitter. Now we, Twitter's still in a down move. Now we had the with the this new variant. Um, we had the 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 travel industry, the airlines. Um, we got hit a little bit this week, and some of the stay-at-home stocks started to move up again. You know, Peloton had been hit pretty hard, has lost a decent amount of value, but just, you know, yesterday with, with uh, this new variant, um, it had a little uptick in its stock price. This is Peloton, uh, eBay. Let's look at eBay real quick. We also have a position in eBay. We sold some put option spreads on it. Why? Because it had, we were looking for the bounce. We looked for the bounce. And we got in, moved back up to the highs. Now it's coming back down to the bottom of the channel, but still moving upwards, which is what we like. So I don't want to really see it fall too far below the uptrending line, but, but we have to take what the market gives. All right, so I think that's probably all we have here. Uh, what else, what else? I think that's about it. But we get, get the gist. What we want to do is look for the... The price action, which way the price action is moving, look for the channels, look for 
bounces off support, which is the, off of the moving averages or off the channels. These are the things that you want to look for to help you with your, your higher probability setups. All right. So that's that for your Saturday synopsis. I hope this is helpful. I hope this is, is, is good for you to hear what I'm looking for and seeing some of these patterns that I look for. Anything that could help you in your trading will give you a leg up and hopefully your account value will continue to go up. All right, let's take a quick look at our website here. Smartoptionsseller.com. Please go to our website, get a free copy of our Put Song Basics right along the headers here. Put Song Basics, bring you to this page and you can put in your name and email address. We will send you a free copy, Put Song. We love Put Song, that's what we do. Um, you can go to our services tab right here. These are our two newsletters that we trade. Two newsletters, our paid newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you want to get you know, to the next level or you want to just chit-chat about things, you can look at our one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, so that's it for this YouTube video today. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button, bottom right-hand corner of the video. <clears throat> Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you think this has been helpful. Send me an email. I love hearing from you. All right, that's all for me today. Let's watch this game today. You know who I'm thinking about. All right, that's all for me. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. Try to see you back here next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.